Greetings, everyone, and welcome to part 10. Yes, we're into double digits now of my 2012 DVD and Blu-ray collection overview. Uh, last time we took a look at the various DVDs I have of stuff based on comic books, as well as my Transformers and a few other random cartoons. Today we're going to look at these two shelves here, which basically comprise most of the rest of my 80s cartoon collection, including the vast majority of the Filmation Library, which is a company that I'm sure many of you who grew up in the 80s are familiar with. Um, yeah, so quite a lot to cover, so let's get to it today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, so carrying on, uh, this time around we're going to be taking a look at a good chunk of the rest of my 80s cartoon collection. And we begin with one of the granddaddies of them all, uh, one that actually recently got a fantastic revival series, Ugh! Thundercats. This is the complete 130 episode series as released by Warner Brothers a few years back. This is actually the... Uh, oh, crap! I'm knocking things over. Ah, it's tired and I'm late. It's tired and I'm late, yeah. It's, well, if that isn't proof, I don't know what is. Well, let me show you here. This is... Uh, which way does this go? Yeah, it goes like that. This is actually the... Uh, lenticular... Does it go that way? Yeah, this is the lenticular cover versions, which uh, are quite hard to uh, come by nowadays. Let's give you a quick look at all of them. Ooh, sort of animated. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And then uh, here... Sort of does the sword rays and put out the signal. And then here, where are we? We have Mumra ripping through the cover. How cool is that? And there you go. So that's that's all 130 episodes of Thundercats. I actually still have not done videos about these, and I really should one of these days, because it's, uh, it's a spectacular set. And then, of course, in the wake of Thundercats popularity, Rankin Bass later uh, put out Silverhawks, which basically was sort of like android people rather than cat people. They also did one called Tiger Sharks, which was part of an anthology show they did called The Comic Strip. Tiger Sharks has yet to get it released. Silverhawks does have a Volume 2 release, which completes the series, but only available as a manufacturer on demand title from Warner Archive. So then we have Stargate Infinity, which is the uh, single season animated series uh, spin off of Stargate SG 1. I don't believe it's considered canon by most fans, so there we go. And here we have all that has been released to date of Gargoyles. Very popular series. There's uh, quite a lot of fans would love to see the rest of that put out on DVD. Uh, so we have the first season and season two, volume one. Uh, and I'm getting stuff. I think Rosie's been into the collection here. She's been checking things out and making a bit of a mess. That's okay. Uh, and here we have Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, the complete series, spread across two volumes. Beautiful sets. I've actually did a I did a pretty in-depth look at this one uh, a while back. Uh, one of these days I'll probably do one for this as well. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out, um, if you want to you know see a more in-depth look at some of these, um, I have actually done full-length video reviews of quite a number of them. Um, any ones that are you know we're looking at in the video today. I will put links in the description down below to uh, any like full-length reviews or whatever that I've done, so you can get a little bit more info there if you like. So there we have Jason the Wheeled Warriors Volume One, 
sadly never completed, although Mill Creek Entertainment is actually finishing that. And Exo Squad Season 1, uh, again, another one that's in limbo, unfortunately. There was two seasons and uh, no sign of the second season. Then we have COPS, Central Organization of Police Specialists, which I've done a ton of videos about, and I'll post links to all of them down below. Um, so Shout Factory put out two volumes, uh, comprising, I believe, the first uh, 43 episodes of the series, and then they never finished it because they just didn't sell very well. So then they sub-licensed it to Mill Creek, who put out the complete series as two volumes. So I kept these ones because they're slightly better quality and have uh, some extras, and I got both of these to basically support the release and also to complete the set. So very cool. I love me some cops. What can I say? It's a great show. And then we have Sonic the Hedgehog, the complete series. This is the Saturday morning series, often referred to as Sonic Sat AM. Really good stuff. And also the one that the uh, ongoing Archie Comics series is most heavily based on. Uh, very, very good stuff. And here we have a whole bunch of stuff based on video games. We've got the complete series of The Legend of Zelda from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Captain N and the new Super Mario World. Captain N the Game. Actually, these should go this way. So we got Captain N the Game Master, the complete series, and then Captain N and the new Super Mario World. This is when Captain N was... It's sort of like the second season of Captain N. And then uh, The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. So the only one I need uh, to sort of fill out this collection is the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which, uh, you know, we'll complete it. Rosie likes all of these, actually. She likes, uh, she watches Captain N quite a bit. She likes the Super Mario ones, and she even likes Zelda and Sonic. She just she just loves all my cartoons, basically. And she's getting into quite a few of them, which is awesome. And here we have Storybook Tales, which is three feature-length uh, animated movies by Filmation, inspired by uh, popular fairy tale characters. We've got uh, a couple with Snow White, we've got Happily Ever After and a Snow White Christmas, and then Journey Back to Oz. So, pretty cool. And we have another British one here. We actually have the uh, the complete series of Sherlock Hound, which is basically uh, you know adaptation of some of Sherlock Holmes stories for kids. Good stuff. And here we have this is actually a bootleg DVD of Mr. T, Mr. T cartoon. So there you go. That's uh, got a whole bunch of stuff on it. And here we got a Weird Al collection. We got the uh, complete series of the Weird Al show. Weird Al Yankovic, The Ultimate Video Collection, which contains all of his music videos up to the one he did uh, based on Star Wars Episode One, And then, of course, we have UHF. Uh, again, Rosie, my, my four-year-old daughter, is a huge Weird Al fan. She's watched every episode of this more times than I can count. She loves the music videos, and she uh, just recently got into the movie as well. So she loves everything to do with Weird Al. She just thinks he's hilarious and... And wonderful. And then here we have Dragons, Fire and Ice, based on uh, the the toy line, which I don't think actually exists anymore. There's a second one of these called Dragons Metal Ages that I really want to pick up because I actually kind of like this one. Uh, and then we have The Secret of Nim, which is a classic Don Bluth film. Don Bluth, former Disney animator, probably most well known for doing Dragon's Lair and All Dogs Go to Heaven. And then we have Gem and the Holograms, the truly outrageous complete series. Beautiful complete series set from Shout Factory. Great stuff. And then we have some movie serials. And maybe wondering why I have movie serials in here. Well, I'll show you in a minute. First off, we have Buck Rogers with Larry Buster Crab. And then we have another edition of Buck Rogers. This is the 70th anniversary edition. This is the first release, which I bought a while ago. I actually got this as a review copy from VCI Entertainment, and I still have yet to review it. I will get around to that. And then, of course, we have Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, which is the 80s series. And actually, interesting side note, Buster Crab actually guest stars in an episode of that. Pretty cool, eh? So the reason I have Buck Rogers here is because I also have Flash Gordon here. And Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers just kind of go together. Like they're, they're both... Whoa, here we go. Some artwork there. <laughs> We're losing that. Okay, so this is the Flash Gordon Savior of the Universe edition of the 1980 movie. This is all three of the original movie serials from the 30s. Uh, complete, uncut, remastered from 35mm film prints. Beautiful set. If you want like the definitive Flash Gordon set, get this one uh, of all the movie serials. And the reason I have these here is because I have 
this, the Flash Gordon Filmation series, which came out around the same time as the, um, uh, the 1980 movie. I think it came out the year before, the year, I think it came out the year before, actually, 1979. And the movie and the cartoon both kind of helped each other get off the ground. So they were, you know, mutually beneficial productions. But a uh, really good cartoon, serialized adventures of Flash Gordon, much like the old movie serials. And then carrying on with that, we move down here, where we have Defenders of the Earth, the complete series, which of course features Flash Gordon, the Phantom, Mandrake the Magician, some jungle guy I can't remember, and uh, yeah, basically all fighting Ming the Merciless with the help of their various offspring. Very cool. So essentially the reason the movie serials are here is because it kind of ties into a little classic heroes section I've got going on here. Because then we go from Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers to the Lone Ranger and Zorro. And in case you haven't noticed already, we're into the Filmation Library here, which is quite an extensive collection. And I have many, many, many videos detailing the acquisition of all of these. I don't know if I'm going to post all of them down below because it's quite a few. But I might post at least the one that gives you the overview. Um, so anyway, yeah, so the Lone Ranger and Zorro, complete series is is. And another classic hero and a great animated series with one of the best theme songs ever, The Legend of Prince Valiant. All 65 episodes spread across two volumes. And, oops, did I just bump the camera? Yes, I did, sorry. Sorry about that, sorry, sorry. And then we have Hero High, the complete series which, as you can probably tell, was supposed to be an Archie series originally, but they lost the rights to do Archie cartoons, so they just slightly modified the characters and made them Archie-esque without being copyright infringing. And then here we've got Filmation's live-action stuff, which is pretty cool. And uh, I've always had a soft spot for these. I mean, there's, they, 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 I don't know, they're just so cheesy, but charmingly so. We have The Secrets of Isis, Arc 2, Space Academy... And Jason of Star Command, all the complete series is is. And uh, in another episode a little while ago, we also saw the uh, this one here, the Ghostbusters. So between all of those, that's almost all the live action stuff that Filmation ever did. They also did uh, Shazam, which unfortunately has not got a DVD release yet. And here we have Space Sentinels and Freedom Force, both the complete series, which also features Isis in animated form. Isis also makes an appearance in Hero High, by the way. So, nice little side note there. And here we have the final major production from Filmation, Brave Star. We have the best of Brave Star, which features five favorite, fan favorite episodes, plus the uh, pilot movie, Brave Star the Legend, which is just fantastic. Um, and then we've got all 65 episodes of the regular series spread across two volumes. Great stuff. I love Brave Star. I think it's just fantastic. Great stuff. Notable in that it's uh, the first uh, kids show to ha feature a Native American main character, which I thought was pretty cool. And then here we have Black Star. So Brave Star and Black Star. <laughs> got a bit of fingerprint action on there. Uh, Black Star, you know, just show I used to watch when I was a kid. Really liked it. And then we get into our He-Man section. So let's uh, let's take a look here. We got he Masters of the Universe, the live-action movie, and the original Snapper Case. Notice this has been re-released recently without the Snapper Case. Ooh, what happened there? Something. Uh, hmm. Something sliced my case. I don't know what's going on there. Um, so anyway, we got the Best of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, 10 episode collector's edition, Best of She-Ra, He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. These all feature art cards and such, and that's one of the reasons I collected all of these, even though I have the uh, actual um, complete series of all of them. And then we have Volume 1 of the uh, Region 2 release of He-Man, uh, because this has different extras. So that's pretty cool. I've actually got the complete first season of that in those individual volumes, but uh, a couple of viewers sent me uh, sent me those, so I keep uh, both of them. So then here, this beautiful mural is actually several TV series. The first four are He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. This one is the New Adventures of He-Man, these two here. 
and these three are the complete series of She-Ra. So I'll just give you a quick look at the front covers of those. There we go. Okay, so there is the complete series of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. That's all 130 episodes. And we'll just put that back in there. I've actually been capturing the videotapes behind. It's all VHS tapes behind the DVDs here, in case you're wondering. Um, I've been capturing the ones on the bottom shelf here, so there's nothing to hold them. <laughs> so then we have the New Adventures of He-Man, also known as He-Man in Space. Really underrated series, actually. I really uh, enjoy it for you know for what it is, basically a sci-fi fantasy adventure. I don't try to t reconcile the continuity with He-Man, because you really can't. It's sort of its own beast. Anyway, and then we have She-Ra, Princess of Power. The complete series. Very cool. Very cool indeed. And then last but most definitely not least, we have the 2002 revival series of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe in the original three-volume collection from uh, BCI Eclipse. Great stuff. This is such a good show. Uh, this is an example of how to do a, you know, re remake, reimagining, revival, whatever, uh, right. And uh, all remakes should take a cue from this series, which, of course, was canceled before it was finished because, you know, it was just too damn good. Anyway, uh, that wraps up most of the 80s cartoons. There's still a few left uh, when we get up to the big collector sets on the top of the uh, shelving units here. Uh, we'll talk about the last few. Oh, hold it a second. There's one more. I forgot uh, Rosie was watching this when she was over the other day, and uh, we neglected to put it back on the shelf where it belongs. We have this one. The Perils of Penelope Pitstop, the complete series. All 17 episodes. Yeah, that's another one that Rosie really enjoys just because it's crazy and fun. She likes the old Hanna-Barbera stuff, I think, just because it's, you know, they're very fast-paced and silly and full of lots of slapstick humor and whatnot. So there you go. This is in the original plastic case. As you can see, it's kind of falling apart, though. These plastic cases really don't stand the test of time very well. They look very classy when they're not falling apart, but, you know, there you go. Anyway, that is definitely it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching. And sayonara.